there's a whole thing. and uh, So I'm writing a video, and it has changed substantially over the time I've written it. It was about the link between time and money. And uh, it's now... I spent a decent portion of today looking up quotes from a group called Dopamine Labs. Oh, God. So <laughs> there's literally uh, there's literally a... I don't want to say person, because I think it's like a group... But it's this firm called Dopamine Labs that kind of got got popular like the about maybe five six years ago, and they started to do a bunch of consulting based on what they knew about neuroscience because the neuroscientists started and started to tell all the apps about how to reward people. So I don't know if Twitter does this, but Instagram does this. It doesn't show you every time you get a like. Mm -hmm. It holds all of the information that you're getting and waits until the right time to send you a notification based on what their algorithm thinks you will be most surprised by. When you will feel the most surprised by seeing a notification, going, oh, you got, you know, 18 likes. Instead of, oh, you got a like, you got a like, got a like over a period of time, it waits and goes, you'll be surprised now because unexpected rewards are what make you do things. It's the same with, um, is it TikTok? I think TikTok does similar with how often it shows you a video that you're algorithmically likely to like. They'll show you a bunch of boring shit. And then as soon as the algorithm, based on all of this user data and research into dopamine, figures out when you're going to be the most surprised, yeah. it'll show you a video you like. Like, okay, I'm going to say this <laughs> in the most inflammatory way possible. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you don't think you're a lemming, you need to think harder. We literally all are. Yeah, I say that with self-awareness that yeah. I too am a lemming. Yeah. We're all fucking lemmings. Uh, and the best we can do is try to think hard about all of the fucking external uh, processes that yeah. manipulate us because there's so much of it. It's yeah. crazy. Uh, and especially, I mean, I can even think like I um, turned my, like if you've noticed I've been engaging less with people on Twitter, mm. it's not because I don't engage with you. It's because uh, I turned off notifications from people who I do not follow yeah. because I wanted less bings and, and bongs and notifications and stuff. And since doing that, like that's been useful. I've realized that in the same way that like my physical body needs a diet, my brain needs a diet. And that's like, nobody thinks about this shit. And that's why you enter, you know, you, t you, you end up falling into the Skinner box as a human and then it turns you into a rat. Yeah, but you, you're too... And you, and you know, as you're, a rat, you're, you're controlled, yeah. Yeah, and as a rat, you no longer have the fucking cognition to yeah. get out of your situation as a rat in a Skinner box. And that's all entirely by design because it's... Uh, oh, there's a quote from the ex-VP of user growth at Facebook. And he said something... I'm, this is paraphrasing because I don't remember the exact quote. But something to the... Something to the effect of... We knew deep, deep down... There were probably some bad unintended consequences of all of this. But we ignored it. Yeah, it's... It's what happens when a bunch of Zuckerbergs want make number go up. Yeah. Make number go up at any cost. And it's not even that. Mm. It's, uh, <laughs> do you know what? It almost takes me back to the time in extra vision, right? <laughs> Where I'm underage to, to rent the video games that I want. I'm there with yeah. my mom and she's like very suspicious about this whole thing. And she sees, uh, Tom Clancy's ghost recon, uh, Graw, Graw 2. She sees Graw 2 and Splinter Cell. And these are both games I would like. Hmm. And she sees Graw 2 and she's like, military? And I guess she probably thinks, war? In the Middle East? No. And she's Splinter Cell and I guess she's like, oh, you know, like a spy, like James Bond. And then the guy in Extra Vision, total legend, yeah. because the game at the time that I wanted more was, was Graw. Yeah. Um, he said like, ah, oh, no, but you see, this game, you shoot people from far away. In this one, you stab them with a knife close up. So really, I think this one's probably... And then she buys that logic because... It's fucking fantastic. Kind of does make sense. Yeah. So that's what it's like for the number go up people. Yeah. You know, they're like the drone operator. It's it's like, do you, you remember, remember when the Call of Duty uh, for uh, AC-130 mission yeah. was like kind of widely considered to be like a bit of a, you should feel uncomfortable about this. Yeah. Because that's the point when the game <laughs> has no bombastic, like it's only sound effects yeah. 
and it just feels like really weird and disconnected. They <laughs> yeah. did that on purpose to make you feel bizarre about what you're doing. I think that's what it's like for the, you know what? That's what it's like for the game designers who end up designing things in, in certain ways. <laughs> They're just trying to make something really engaging. I mean, but what about the cost? Uh, you know what? I'll actually, just because they were at a good point, I'll actually just read a quote. This probably won't ever make it into a video because I'm reworking this pretty heavily, but even modern World of Warcraft has been adjusted to reward you harder and faster than ever before. World quests are bite-sized quests designed for rapid engagement. Mythic Plus dungeons are infinite slot machine levers to pull. The Great Vault is a weekly habit builder. The developers are looking at statistics analyzed by the same kinds of people who analyze metrics for Facebook, for Twitter, for Netflix, and the entire field of user engagement optimizes for the same thing. Not your satisfaction. Not how much fun you have. Not how happy you are. Those are very, very difficult to put into numbers. They optimize for time. Daily active users. Monthly active users. Time in app. Your worth reduced to a number. Time. And that's why you are better as a rat than a human. <laughs> and that yep. is what these systems kind of end up doing. Mm -hmm. um, and this shit's worth thinking about. You know, kind of like interrogating what games do super well. The ones you know what? Engagement? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And and that's what's yeah. challenging because I think uh, they they need to get their hits of dopamine from quality content yeah. rather than from kind of rewards. Mm -hmm. Like, who does the FF14 MSQ because they want the little toy at the end? Literally, no one. Yeah. I assume. <laughs> like I did Omega Beyond the Rift mm -hmm. and. Like, I will never use the reward I got from that. I yeah. thought it was quite cute what the reward was because it had a little bit of meaning in it. Hmm. But I didn't do it for the reward. I did it because I wanted to see where the story went. Mm -hmm. And I think the problem is when we get into these more action RPG-like games, we start to have issues. T to be honest, like, I'll put it this way. If I could go back in time and prevent Diablo 1 from existing, <laughs> like, <laughs> anyone should do that. 100%. Diablo 1 is a brilliant game. Diablo yeah. 2 is a brilliant game. Diablo 3 is a good game that then got quite very, very good. PoE, also a brilliant game. Lost Ark, a pretty damn good, in some cases, brilliant game, etc. whatever. Mm. But we can all see the circuitry that these games are optimizing around. And yeah. what they are less good for is novel, meaningful human experiences. Mm -hmm. yep. And if you look at the you know the cinema that's the most meaningful, um, you know, parts of uh games like ff14 to the most meaningful indie games things like that it's the novel human experience that they deliver you can think about world of warcraft or even warcraft 3 like it's the cool moments it's the big moments in the story it's the wrath gate right it's fucking uh fucking varian and sarfang after um deathbringer sarfang gets killed like those are the really big moments that stand out you know, so it's quite tricky the way that these action RPG designs, the, these ARPGs, have kind of moved more and more and more and more into other games. And I think they are definitely making games worse. Yeah, it's because it's the lazy more way More engaging, out. but worse. Yeah, it's the, it's the lazy way out of, you know, the most, speak to the most fundamental uh, part of the human monkey brain as opposed to I mean Dr. Frackenberg puts it extremely well we are playing to biology and not the human spirit that, wow oh. <laughs> yeah. that is that yeah. is it that yeah. is beautiful but I will say just because we're kind of here and we're definitely this definitely comes across as tremendous moral grandstanding about what constitutes a good video game some of that is absolutely true oh also fuck it it's what I personally believe yeah yeah I mean also same but then Dominic's saying, some people just want to play another Dynasty Warrior. Who are you to say it's bad? That's fine. You're allowed to have these experiences. It's completely fine. It's more the the race, the arms race that's resulted and the ultimate trend of, I think, video game ad addiction by design because we're going for engagement as opposed to meaningful experiences in a lot of cases. Is, yeah. is That's ultimately the problem. The problem is the trend and the control over human attention and human life as opposed to someone somewhere because it's not like an individual problem of you can't go well as an example fuck the world of warcraft developers for designing this way they have to to get you to play their game there's a lots of games that have those elements but also have meaningful stuff to them attached 
and it's kind of hard to draw something there because both can coexist because this isn't like a black and white situation not at all it's just this is a big trend that's kind of getting larger and larger and larger as time goes on it's very very dangerous we're hitting a point where it's like we talked about this a while ago in a news video but it's like this overlaps with gambling pretty hard and then as soon as video games touch the gambling sphere of loot boxes and you know the slot machine stuff Very and rewards, yeah, all the yeah, and you've got psychologists and people from Vegas sitting down with game developers to go, oh, you want to do this? Then we have a little bit of a kind of, ha, what? Where's the? Where's the? Not like oversight. I mean, there definitely should be regulation oversight at some capacity of some of the worst offenders. But where's like the the human collective going? Get this shit away from me. And that's where I think in games we need to radically move towards, um, it's like a few things. Like one of them is player investment. Another yeah. one is, I okay, actually, I had this point like really well laid out and it's completely fucking exited my head. Hmm. Um, but like just moving kind of more towards like the novel experiences, things. So like for, for MMOs, it's like, well, how do we make them more social? Uh, right? Like, how do we do that? How do we, because if you think of, a, of an insanely re, re, sort of repeatable game, like even a Battle Royale, hmm. like playing PUBG with a bunch of friends, what are you doing? You're you're calling out like, oh, there's fuckers behind the ridge line at 210. Yeah. And like, that's like some pretty real problem solving yeah. and communication. Yeah, that could be. A, so yeah. is that like uh, a Skinner box thing in terms of its engagement? No, it's more of a, these are like more novel, interesting challenges. Hmm. Um, so I, I'm just trying to think of like, what are the ways of getting human engagement that are like sort of more meaningful. They're like not, if the rat in the Skinner box is basically just getting junk food, you know, like what is the good food equivalent to getting that engagement? So maybe that is a really strong beat in the storyline. Maybe that is an incredible social experience that a game has fostered because of like a really cool world PVP design or something like that. But I think generally speaking, it's not going to be endless shitty loot grinds. It could be a specific cool loot grind uh, or loot thing like uh, Shadowmourne because of all of the stuff that's imbued within Shadowmourne, what it means to all those people. Whereas then you kind of look at maybe some other legendaries that have happened to the game later on and they don't have the story. They're kind of just like game mechanic doohickeys. Yeah, it's the <clears throat> pallets. Yeah, it's the equivalent of fast food in a sense, in a weird way. It's just, yeah. here's, yeah, your, here's, your, here's your meal replacement cube as opposed to your meal. Yeah, like, so <laughs> Legion Legendary, Shadowlands Legendaries, yeah. those those are burgers from McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, Shadowmourne, which I mean, like, I, I don't have, yeah. but like Shadowmourne, that's, that's like a steak. Or that Telegosa one, because I know that it has a whole bunch of like yeah. narrative stuff. Fangs of the Father, mm. which has all the Rathian storyline in it. Mm. Like, that's an example of a legendary that's like, it's unique, it's really cool, it has a storyline and a bunch of, you know, there's meaning within these blades because of what they represent. Mm. And it's like, how do we get more towards there yeah. than just the like... So here's like one of the reasons why I don't like the world quest system since uh, Legion. Because while it may have been more boring to do the same patch 5.1 daily quests over and over and over again, in between those quests, you had a real fucking banger storyline. Hmm. Like, do you remember the 5.1 story? It's like, suddenly we have a fucking Azeroth political thriller. Yeah. And that was just like really novel and really cool. I think it's like one of their best patch storylines ever. Um, and yeah, sure, there was kind of like maybe more bore i'd say more boring but perhaps also more flowy because of how you could knock them out mm. uh, in terms of those daily quests and you did get slightly different dailies um every, every day but then you move to the world quest system and like technically it's it's going to be a more novel experience every day because they're different ones and they have different rewards and all of that but it's a significantly less meaningful experience because it's not like you you have a storyline and you're kind of moving through it like with um um, yeah, you know, just the storylines weren't as good. Yeah, and it doesn't... In those. And in the Legion reps, it's like, imagine if the Valajar had a full big storyline in them. Like, mm. holy fuck, that could have been so cool. But it's not there because the system wasn't designed that way. It was designed more as a, like, uh, reward and gameplay doling out system that eventually is there, so you do it every day to fill up a Paragon bar, so now it's a grind for the type of player that enjoys a grind. But then the thing is, like, I'm not really a player who enjoys the grind. 
And the reason why I liked some of those raps back in the past is because they had a cool theme, they had a cool story, and a cool reward that matched that theme and that story. There was context. Yeah, but for me, I don't give a fuck about the storm whatever Drake that you get from a Valajar box, because it's just a bing bing wahoo box from filling up a bar a whole bunch of times from doing a bunch of random shit in the world. Hmm. It's not like I do a bunch of questing with those characters and then we go through a story. Yeah, here's yeah, you've you've done the story. Here's the reason you get the mount. Yeah, even Netherwing is like an a good early example of this. It's like yeah. I you know, eventually I talked to this dude, I ended up there, I went in disguise as an orc. Like, are they incredible quest lines yeah. for Netherwing? No, is it a big grind? Yes. But it does evolve as you do it. You get the race, you get some yeah. of those things. You're you're more like immersed in the in the fucking you know nether dragon thing. You have the storyline at the end where Illidan shows up, and then you got your dragon, and yeah. it just feels so much more contextual and so much more of a player story that's been embarked upon, versus world quests, which are just I'm helping the Carrions. Woo! <laughs> what am I doing? I'm I'm at fl Carrion Flight School for the seventh time in nine days. What the, what and what's, what's the, the building point? to? It's building, it's building to, to the Paragon box. Yeah, it's not building to. A story that I care about. And I guess they'll come in and say, yeah, but what about the Covenant stories? It's like, well, they... They were, uh, they were time-gated as well for that. Yeah, they, they were they were fucking time-gated out. They weren't even tied into that content. Yeah. And they were of mixed quality. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, Bitburn actually puts it really, really well, saying the Bing Bing Wahoo should be the cherry on top. Yeah. And I think the, the equivalent I will kind of use here is, because it's always how I work, food analogy, where it's like, you could have a spoonful of MSG, <laughs> and sure, that's going to light your brain up in all the same ways that MSG does. But wouldn't you rather have some nice stir-fried beef with MSG in it? I mean, that's 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 exactly the point where you wouldn't want the stir-fried beef without MSG because the MSG makes it better. Yeah. But you also just don't want to get at the bag of MSG with it's, your hands and go fucking it's crazy. It's like, for me, it's like that novel human experience uh, yeah. that, that video games can so uniquely provide us. Yeah. And not even in the most dynamic, interactive way. Like, in World of Warcraft, it can provide those cool, unique human experiences just in a storyline or, you know, the world is moving and shaking. Yeah. Because we're so invested in that world and so immersed in that world, and that's what makes WoW special. <laughs> so it's like the more that we've done the world quests and stuff, to me, it's basically like, um, it's like empty calories. It's just yeah. junk food. And the game's just teaching you to shovel it in and shovel it in and shovel it in to get your little reward. Rather than just having something smaller, really tasty, you know, fucking nutrients. Mm. Right? Which is the more I do this grind, maybe it takes like 20 days, but throughout that 20 days, there's a bunch of cool, unique content and it's a nice little story that my character went on yeah. instead of just an endless fucking content loop. Yeah. It's all and, and that's the thing. Yeah, it's all about, not even like meaning and like super meaningful, you need to have like a philosophical takeaway from the story. It just needs to be some capacity of the human experience. Yeah. It's like a difference between watching, well, I mean, even like, even like a Fast and Furious movie is like, maybe that's closer to 80% MSG, but at least there's some meaning in there, at least there's some sort of, hey, these characters exist and they have a family. Like, I mean, <laughs> there's obviously jokes about that. That's the very, the very... Ah, yeah, that's another way to put it. Bing Bing Wahoo Sugar, but Woe duels it out in piles on cardboard crackers. Nobody plays a roguelike for the story. That's the thing where this gets, like, genuinely very difficult to talk about because you end up kind of going straight to absolutes and going, well, here's the problem with, like... Well, they do play the roguelike for a story. Well, It's yeah, just not yeah, the story the roguelite's telling. 